cheesy dibbles. Honestly, we could talk about discontinued food items we miss all day long, which is why we're making this fourth installment. Some really fantastic products have been discontinued over the years, and in this list, we'll be commemorating some of the ones we miss the most. We're sorry if this reminds you of all the great food you're missing out on, but this way, everyone can be nostalgic together. Now let's get into some more discontinued food items we miss, part four. I'm going to the great beyond! Colored Easy Squirt Ketchup. Real tomato ketchup, Eddie? The general response to Heinz's attempt at creativity wasn't exactly overwhelmingly positive. In fact, most people were actually a little disgusted by it. This helps. Sure, tomatoes do naturally grow in a variety of colors other than red, including green, yellow, and even purple. However, trying to translate this diversity in ketchup form, well, it came out looking anything but natural. That wasn't exactly a point in its favor, since moms are generally pretty health conscious when it comes to feeding their kids kids, and anything that looks remotely artificial usually gets categorized as unhealthy. This Heinz product was targeted to kids, with the bottles designed to ergonomically fit their small hands. Its nozzle had a finer point than the typical ketchup bottle, making it the perfect tool for kids to draw creative designs with. Easy Squirt Ketchup came in the classic red, as well as green, purple, blue, orange, and teal. The latter three colors could be found in their mystery color editions, which were sold in rainbow print containers and added an element of surprise to the product. Upon its initial introduction in 2000, this product had a lot of success, but after the novelty of it wore off, or after parents decided they had had enough of seeing their kids top their fries with a weird purple goop, sales started to dwindle and colored Easy Squirt Ketchup was completely pulled from the shelves by 2006. Is ketchup a vegetable? Planters Cheese Balls. The cheese balls are in the his house. This one's here to inspire hope in all of us. Planters Cheese Balls were a hit in the 90s. These puffed powdered cheese covered balls were addicting and delicious. Unfortunately, they were also discontinued in the early 2000s. However, Mr. Peanut is thrilled to announce that, due to popular demand, cheese balls were brought back in 2018. It's only a limited re-release, but beggars can't be choosers. They were being sold only by Walmart and Amazon, starting on July 1, 2018. As of right now, they are no longer available at Walmart, but can still be purchased online through Amazon. We recommend getting your hands on some while you still can, because it's only a matter of time before they're completely discontinued once more. Cheese ball? The limited edition revival of this snack food was an incredibly successful marketing move. Fans jumped at the opportunity to get to experience one of their favorite snack foods again. It's possible that other companies will notice Planter's success and decide to take a leaf out of their book, which would mean very big things for all of us who miss so many discontinued food items. All in all, we're very happy to have been able to get back to munching on Planter's cheese balls while watching TV. And we'll definitely miss it once it's gone again. You know what'll cheer you up? A cheese ball. Nintendo Cereal System. I'd call them the Super Mario Brothers. The tail end of the 80s graced video game lovers everywhere with Nintendo Cereal System, a Zelda and Super Mario Brothers inspired cereal. The video game theme wasn't even the coolest thing about this cereal. What really made it stand out from the crowd was that each box contained two different flavors. One, which was based off the Super Mario Brothers, had yellow, orange, and green pieces and was labeled fruity. The Zelda inspired cereal was pink purple, and yellow, and was berry-flavored. Each cereal was packaged in its own bag, with one bag of each in every box. The individual pieces were shaped like characters and items from their respective video games. Pieces of the fruity cereal were likenesses of Mario, Koopa Troopas, Super Mushrooms, Goomba, and Bowser. Big Bowser! The Bowser the Boom Boom Bar! While the individual pieces of the berry cereal were shaped like Link, hearts, boomerangs, shields, and keys. Just like many other cereals of this era, prizes were hidden at the bottom of the box. In terms of Nintendo cereal system, there were 12 available collector's cards to be found. The fact that this cereal was on the market for less than two years makes any remaining boxes pretty valuable. In 2010, an unopened box was sold on eBay for about $200. That's a pretty impressive price, considering that it's, you know, cereal. <laughs> Ghostbusters Marshmallows. It's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. This wouldn't be a list of discontinued food we miss without at least one item of Ghostbusters marketing. They really went all out when it came to promoting the movie franchise, and were particularly inspired when it came to edible advertising. Since the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is such an iconic character from the Ghostbusters movies, it was only a matter of time before they came out with Ghostbusters Marshmallows. 
These bags of marshmallows contain white marshmallows shaped like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, as well as green marshmallows shaped like the famous Ghostbusters ghost, Slimer. Not going to lie, the green marshmallows make for pretty strange looking s'mores. We used to roast Stay Puffed Marshmallows. Although that does make them a great Halloween treat. So these were the perfect marshmallows for fall bonfires. If you wanted to get creative, you could also use these marshmallows to make green Rice Krispie squares. They might not look all that appetizing, but they were perfect for themed parties. These marshmallows were released in 2016, in celebration of the Ghostbusters reboot that was hitting theaters that year. While no statement from Campfire, the company that produces them, can be found stating that the product has been discontinued, we can't seem to find this food item anywhere either. Most online stores have it listed as out of stock or unavailable, and it doesn't appear on the Campfire website anymore. All signs seem to point to discontinuation. This Mr. Stay Puft is okay. Tricks Yogurt. Tricks are exclusively for children. Yoplait's Trix yogurt was especially popular among children, probably due to its bright colors and high sugar content. The product's aesthetics were enhanced by the fact that the yogurt in each cup came in two different colors. Each color took up half of the container and typically corresponded to the flavor of the yogurt. Whoa. A lot of new flavors. For example, watermelon burst yogurt was half pink and half green. You had the choice of mixing them together, which had the potential to result in a slightly unappealing color, or to carefully eat one color at a time. This yogurt was actually inspired by the Trix cereal, which was first introduced in 1954 and made up of a bunch of colorful fruit flavored bits. There's been a lot of controversy in regards to the shapes of the individual pieces of Trix cereal, and it's really best not to get into it. But back to the yogurt. Trix yogurt is a mystery of sorts. Today, most people who were once fans of this product will claim that it's been discontinued and that they can't find it in stores anywhere. A few of these people have gone right to the source, messaging Yoplay on social media to ask about the fate of this once famous yogurt. Yoplay consistently answers that it's still being produced. It's all very confusing. All we know is that it's been a hot minute since we last saw Trix in the dairy aisle. If I purchase these Trix, there'll be no trouble. Scooby-Doo Baked Graham Cracker Sticks Scooby, will you do it for a few Scooby snacks? Scooby-Doo was first introduced in 1969 in the classic Saturday morning cartoon, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Since then, he has been the protagonist of several other TV shows and movies, both animated and live action. While animation styles and character designs have changed throughout the years, one thing that remains constant in every iteration of Scooby-Doo is the Great Dane's love of Scooby snacks. These dog treats were so recognizable, it was only a matter of time before they were brought to life. While Scooby snacks that are actually dog treats, like the ones in the show, have been produced, Scooby snacks won't work on me this time. It didn't stop there. Human-friendly Scooby snacks were introduced by Keebler and were essentially cookies shaped like dog bones with the word Scooby carved into them. The baked graham cracker sticks came in flavors like cinnamon and honey, and it was always exciting for kids to find a package in their lunchbox. They get bonus points for being inspired by such an iconic and beloved cartoon character, but they also tasted pretty great too. These Scooby snacks inspired cookies can still be found on Amazon, but they're listed as discontinued by manufacturer. So grab them while you still can. Who knows when they'll disappear for good. Two Scooby Snacks? Third Degree Burn Scorchin' Habanero Doritos. Come on, Doritos, you can't rep the flaming hot name. The Degree Burn brand was a limited edition release of three new Doritos flavors. They were First Degree Burn Blazin' Jalapeno, Second Degree Burn Fiery Buffalo, and our personal favorite, Third Degree Burn Scorchin' Habanero. As the name suggests, these Doritos packed quite a punch in terms of heat, with the spice levels getting progressively higher from one flavor to the next. They were actually released alongside Pepsi's Cease Fire Max Citrus Freeze, with the logic being that the drink would cool you off after eating such spicy chips. Third Degree Burn Scorch and Habanero Doritos were bright red, which was fitting considering just how hot they were. It was the kind of heat that slowly builds up, which makes these chips particularly dangerous. If you quickly ate a bunch of chips, right off the bat it seemed like everything was peachy, but a few seconds later you were hit with the full force of the spice. These Doritos were really tasty and actually turned out to be pretty popular. Unfortunately, they were only ever meant to be limited edition, and so, like all good things, their production inevitably came to an end. Hopefully Doritos brings them back one day, because we have yet to find another Doritos flavor that can rival these in heat. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> 
Waffle Crisp cereal. Waffle crisps have been discontinued, though. There was French Toast Crunch cereal, so of course there had to be a Waffle Crisp cereal, too. The waffle-shaped pieces with a maple syrup-flavored glaze first hit shelves in 1996 and cemented their position as one of Post's best breakfast cereals. If you're not a fan of maple, this cereal probably wouldn't have been the one for you. Waffle Crisp is known for both tasting and smelling strongly of maple syrup. Seriously, all you had to do was open the box and your kitchen smelled like a sugar shack for days. This made them a favorite among anyone who loved maple syrup. Oh, go girlfriend, I'm your mother. But was definitely a turnoff for anyone who wasn't as much of a fan. After a few years of getting increasingly more difficult to find, this cereal was officially discontinued in 2018. This was heartbreaking for a lot of people, as many considered it to be one of their all-time favorites. You can't help but compare Waffle Crisp to French Toast Crunch, and opinions on the two can be quite polarizing. For Waffle Crisp fans, it's a bit insulting that French Toast Crunch was revived after a period of discontinuation. But maybe instead of being bitter, we can look at it as a sign that there's still hope that Waffle Crisp cereal might one day make a comeback of its own. Waffle Crisps, the best. Oreo Cakesters. Ich bin Oreo Cookie. Oreo Cakesters were one of the many, many variations of the original Oreo cookie, but they still managed to stand out from the crowd. They followed the same sandwich-style recipe, with a layer of cream between two cookies. But they differed in that they were softer and, as the name implies, more cake-like. Oreo Cakesters were still bite-sized, making them the perfect after-school snack or small dessert. How's about a little dessert? They were available in all the classic Oreo flavors, including the traditional chocolate cookie with vanilla filling, golden, double stuffed, peanut butter, and chocolate. These mini cakes were released in 2007, but only lasted a few years before being discontinued. This left a lot of people very upset. And to this day, fans of the Cakesters are messaging Oreo on Facebook, asking for the product to be brought back. Nothing has come from it so far, but it shows just how missed Oreo Cakesters truly are. Luckily, there are still hundreds of available Oreo products to choose from, so you don't have to go completely without. However, this particular Oreo product was just different enough from the original cookie to make things interesting, while still maintaining everything we know and love about Oreos. So we really do miss them. I've always preferred the cream part of an Oreo. Squeeze it. For fruity fun, just squeeze it. Squeeze It, a fruit-flavored juice, has popped in and out of production many times since its first release in the 80s. It appeared in stores for the last time in 2012. The juice was packaged in plastic bottles, and its thing was that in order to drink the juice, you had to squeeze the bottle, hence the name. The different flavors had cutesy names like Grumpy Grape, Chucklin' Cherry, Berry Be Wild, and Silly Billy Strawberry, which from an adult perspective are decently cringeworthy, but hey, the kids like them. They're really good. They're my favorite. After a successful run in the 80s, Squeeze It entered the 90s with plans to shake things up. They started off by releasing mystery flavors, similar to what Heinz did with their Easy Squirt Ketchup, except instead of being sold in rainbow patterned containers, mystery flavor Squeeze Its were packaged in black bottles. They also collaborated with Lifesavers, which led to the production of a handful of new flavors based off of the candy. At the tail end of the 90s, sales started to dwindle, and the drink was discontinued for the first time in 2001. It made a brief reappearance from 2006 to 2007, then again from 2011 to 2012. But they haven't been seen since. Since everyone's trying to move away from straws these days, maybe we can bring these back in order to encourage the younger generation to do the same. It's an opportunity to change the world. Help yourself to seconds and tap that screen for our next great video. New to our channel and want to join our notification squad? It's easy. After you bang that subscribe button, just ring that bell.